Okay. And for today's session, uh, it's my privilege to uh, welcome Mr. Kaustab. So Mr. Kaustab is the CEO and founder of AutoNext Automation Private Limited. And uh, this is an automation technology startup, uh, which is currently working on the India's first driverless EV practice. Can you imagine, right? Uh, we have a wonderful topic today uh, where uh, Mr. Kaustab is working on the uh, first driverless EV tractors in India and his company is going to do it and uh, he is here with us today and he is going to help us understand more about EV tractors and how that EV technology works and how driverless EV tractors work. Hope all of you kids are very excited for this session. Yes, yes. Even I'm very excited uh, to know about this topic because EV vehicles is a currently trending topic, right? And many of you would have uh, known about the Tesla cars, uh, which is currently trending. And Elon Musk has designed a lot of uh, cars and these cars are self-driving cars and they also have the electric capacity, which means, you know, you can, you don't have to have any license. Uh, you can just hop onto the car and you can tell where you want to go and the car will take you there automatically, right? So such is uh, the innovation that is happening uh, today. And uh, it's my privilege to welcome Mr. Kaustab. Uh, welcome Mr. Kaustab. How are you doing today? Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, how are you? Uh, and how is everyone? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm doing great as well. Uh, so it's our uh, privilege to have you here today, sir. And uh, hope uh, kids get to uh, learn a lot of uh, interesting insights from you and understand more about the uh, EV tactics. Right. And uh, before we begin, sir, I uh, wanted to understand, uh, you know, from your childhood, like uh, from someone who is uh, born in a place to a startup who is working on the currently trending technology. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about your childhood and how it all started? Sure, certainly. So uh, basically, I'm a electronics engineer. Uh, I just like everyone else. Uh, uh, you know, I used to visit my grandparents uh, during uh, school vacations. So my grandparents are farmers. Uh, you know, I've seen them doing uh, farming with bullocks, uh, you know, uh, carrying implements and doing different tasks on the farm. And then we had, you know, tractors coming in, the diesel tractors. So I saw, uh, I've, I've done all, done it all. I've uh, driven a bullock cart as well and uh, um, operated uh, those kind of uh, old machines and then uh, uh, saw tractors coming in. Uh, when tractors uh, came in, a few of my relatives actually, they uh, bought the tractors, but then ended up selling the tractors back within one year. So, you know, that was basically, uh, uh, you know, the time when we got to know that there are the different challenges uh, in owning tractors. And uh, uh, that's that's the, re uh, that's the uh, time when I actually got inspired to build uh, electric and, uh, you know, self-driving tractor. So, yeah, I mean, that that is my experience, uh, you know, from childhood, how he basically got into this idea of building tractors. Yeah. Great. Uh, I mean, um, such an inspiring uh, story that is where you yourself have seen uh, what farmers undergo every day and uh, you take it up, you took it up as a challenge and uh, you are trying to build something on the uh, space where a lot of uh, people don't do that, right? And uh, it's an interesting technology as well. So uh, to take this further, uh, so can you, uh, you know, explain us uh, like how you came up with this idea, like especially EV tractors and uh, also, you know, your passion towards it, where it all started on that. Right. right. So, uh, I mean, uh, I was into engineering uh, first year of my college and, uh, you know, I was as a new student uh, in electronics field. I was also excited to do a lot of robotics uh, and, uh, uh, you know, build small robots like line follow robots and uh, remote control robots, etc. And and that same year, I you know again uh, visited my grandparents in uh, back in my native place. And over there, I saw one of my uh, uncle had uh, you know sold one year old tractor. So I asked him naturally, why did you sell it? I mean, it was working fine. It was a brand new tractor. Uh, you know, you were able to do get the job done easier easily compared to you know riding bullocks and uh, you know the old machines. So he told me that buying tractor is okay, I mean, you can buy it, you know, there are a lot of subsidies, etc. But then operating a tractor, it's like, uh, you know, having a white elephant in your garage. So there's a lot of fuel, uh, you have to spend a lot of uh, uh, money in, uh, you know, maintenance, etc. And uh, that's why, uh, you know, the, most of the farmers, 
in India are you know owning less than five acre. I mean they don't have massive uh, fields like uh, you know outside India. Uh, so the land ownership is very small, and it's getting uh, lesser and lesser every year. So making uh, owning tractor doesn't make uh, real sense for majority of the farmers, which is why uh, they are selling it back, uh, especially because of the operation expense. So that's when I I realized that okay this is a very big problem because India you know as from my from our childhood we've been taught that agriculture is the backbone of our nation, and uh, you know if th there's such a big problem uh, in in uh, the agri machinery let's fix it. So I was building robots here in college and I was seeing this problem. So I linked these two problems with, with each other. I saw a line follow robot actually working in a, uh, you know, following a line and farm is, you know, a box. I mean, it's a rectangle or, you know, different shapes. And the tractor goes in a particular line and follows that pattern. So why don't we build, use that technology here on the tractors? And uh, that actually, uh, uh, you know, made uh, sense because the the uncle who sold the tractor he also told me that uh, finding drivers uh, is very difficult in India, and uh, even though we have so much a population, people are everywhere. Uh, but driving tractor is like driving a car without shock absorbers on a very bad road. So you can imagine the pain that farmers go through. So that was actually the original idea where uh, we thought of making the tractor driverless, and uh, to fix the operation expense, to fix the uh, issue of heavy, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, fuel and maintenance expense, we made the tractor electric because during that time, 2016, 17, uh, a lot of electric scooters, startups were starting, a lot of electric three wheelers were actually coming up. And, uh, you know, India was moving towards electrification of vehicles. And uh, this tractor was something that, you know, nobody was thinking about. So I thought, why not? Why don't we do this? I mean, why don't we? Uh, get that uh, tractors made electric. So uh, we actually, uh, you know, started the company based on this this inspiration that we got from the farms. I took my uh, college friends who, uh, you know, were from different parts and mechanical engineers, electronic engineers to my own village. And I showed them how the tractor works. And I made them ride the tractors so that they understand the problem. And that's when, uh, you know, the journey began. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are here now. Amazing, uh, you know. Uh, when you said that you uh, you built robots in your college days, you know, uh, it was really uh, inspiring because uh, you know, in uh, in during my engineering days as well, I have built the projects and I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, you know, converting something to your passion and having your own startup that is something it's really inspiring. And a lot of kids here also, you know, have built a lot of robots, and I'm sure you know they will also get such a passion uh, like you, and they would also uh, you know, move further in their career as well. And uh, to take this further, uh, Mr. Kaustab, so, uh, I mean, tractor is new to us. I mean, I have seen tractors in videos, uh, but not actually, you know, uh, you know, spend time with them like you did, right? So can you tell us how uh, EV tractors work uh, uh, and how it is different from our regular diesel tractors and uh, more points on, you know, what are the advantages and what are the cons? of these tractors, uh, can you shed some light on that? Certainly, certainly. Uh, so I would like to present uh, my screen as well, uh, so that- uh, Yes, please, you're yeah. waiting for it, yeah. Show some videos, et cetera, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I hope my uh, screen is visible to you. Yes, it. yes, it is visible, yes. Yeah, so uh, electric tractors actually are, you know, not very different than the diesel tractors, so you see there is uh, a complete, uh, you know, under the hood, there was an engine here and uh, there was a fuel tank. Now uh, the same is replaced with a, a motor engine. In, in place of engine, we have a motor to drive the entire transmission. And there is a battery, which is basically, uh, you know, replacing the fuel tank. So that's the primary difference. The rest of the mechanical components, the transmission, the gears, wheels, etc. as you can see, it looks like a normal tractor unless you really hear it uh, working. There is no thundering sound like uh, or noise that normal diesel tractors have. Uh, this is a purely electric silent tractor. So if it's standing behind you, you won't even come to know when it came behind you. So uh, that's the primary you know, difference uh, here in the electric tractor. Uh, how it works, uh, uh, for that, I have a quick video uh, which will show you exactly. So I hope uh, screen is visible. So I think the sound is uh, not shareable. So yes, yes, yeah, it's visible. Yeah. 
We have three variants, 20 HP, uh, 35 HP and 45 HP. These are some of the videos of our trials that we've been doing for many uh, days now. Yes, so you saw the tractors doing different tasks, uh, different farming applications, even in water like scenarios where you know, tractor has to go in uh, water log. Even that, the tractor is able to, electric tractor is able to do very easily. And uh, uh, that's how, uh, you know, uh, basically the tractor works. And basically the tractors, electric tractors are more powerful. See, as you can see, the tractors are pulling 13 tons. We even tested it for 35 tons of massive trolleys being pulled uh, with a 45 horsepower tractor, which typically when diesel are pulled by 60 HP tractors. So a bigger uh, uh, diesel tractor, what, the, what it can do, the same a 45 HP tractor can do in electric variants. So that's the, you know, uh, that's how they exactly work. And uh, yeah, so there's some more, you know, videos for you uh, where, you know, we are using it currently in different applications, different, uh, uh, you know, use cases. So tractors are not only used in uh, uh, farms, they are used in industries as well. Almost 40% of them are used in industries. So here is one of the use cases which uh, you know shows you uh, how the tractors are used inside a factory, a biomass factory. This is our latest uh, model. We carry the waste from one location to another. Um, right. Uh, the, the, I think it's really uh, inspiring video and uh, it was very interesting as well to see. And uh, before, you know, I have one more interesting question. So before I ask that, you know, kids are uh, being uh, relentless and they're throwing a lot of questions. So I'll just ask you a few questions from uh, the audience. Uh, so Laksh Jain here, uh, who has joined us today, asked about, you know, what about the lack of charging points and uh, electricity supply in villages? And... Uh, I mean, there's one more question, which is very similar to it. Uh, it's from uh, Vivan uh, Basin, and uh, he has a doubt, like, won't EV tractors run out of charge uh, faster than diesel cars? So if you can give some information on that, it will be helpful, sir. Sure. sure. So, uh, yes, I think that has been a perspective of most of us, even Indian people, who uh, that, you know, uh, rural India does not have electricity. We, we have power cuts going on. So how are you going to charge the tractors? So... Uh, as far as tractor is concerned, uh, it's a commercial vehicle. So farmers buy it to do the farming jobs, which the farm is not very far from their home. So it hardly, you know, 10, 15 kilometer radius maximum, that's it. And the tractors are typically used in this radius alone. So your home uh, can be the center point and your farm can be the work, place where you go to work. Uh, with your two-wheelers or your four-wheelers or your even three-wheelers, we live in high rises, 
uh, you know, city areas. Where most of us live in uh, second floor or, you know, up to 28th floor. But we can't bring our vehicles upstairs. Farmers live on the ground floor. Uh, electricity, electricity supply for single phase on at your home is readily available. There is no problem anymore. Uh, earlier days, yes, I understand. Even I used to go, uh, you know, we had 10 hours of power cuts and uh, in, in summer vacations, especially when it's very hot. But now uh, there is no uh, such thing. Uh, single phase power supply is always there. We have a charger on board of the tractor because the tractor is so big. We have a lot of space to mount the charger. And we've done that. We've uh, under your... Uh, you know, dashboard where your steering is, there's a uh, ch charger, OBC onboard charger, DC DC converter uh, inside that. So you just plug it uh, to any nearby single phase power supply, and that's it. The tractor charges. Uh, second point your tractor is going on the field where, you know, uh, uh, you're getting the job done, like tilling, plowing, etc. On these fields, every alternate field will have a power, uh, uh, you know, bore well or a, a water pump because you need water for the plants. From where this water comes, it needs electricity. It needs the pump to run. The same electricity power supply can be used to charge the tractors. So charging infrastructure that we talk about in, in, in uh, uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, or Delhi like cities where you know uh, people are not buying electric cars that uh, readily is not an issue in rural area. You have a lot of places where you can charge the vehicle. And that's the reason why uh, electric tractors can be easily, uh, uh, you know, uh, sold or people can adopt it very uh, comfortably compared to a four wheeler. And a tractor is used continuously. So someone asked that how fast the cha uh, charging happens. Uh, I hope that's the question. Yeah, and uh, it takes about three hours to charge your tractor. So farmer who is driving the tractor, he'll start uh, early morning, 7 a.m., go to the field, get the work done, work for four four hours maximum you can't drive more than four hours because it's very painful it's not not your ac cabin car you know where you're sitting comfortably it's a very harsh condition so uh four hours maximum he'll work and then he has to come back and you know uh have lunch or whatever i mean he has to rest so that time he can charge again go back again uh so that cycle can continue for 24 7 so some of the industry applications have work uh, is continuous so shift wise they charge they use it and come back again. So that's how it is. Great. Uh, I think that answers the question. And uh, there's one more question from Vihan Kedia who asked, uh, you know, why did you keep the name Auto Next? What is the reason behind it? <laughs> I think there's someone, if well, anyone can answer, it would be you. So I think want to hear from you. Yes, I think uh, for kids, everybody knows, knows Transformers, right? Transformer movie, everybody has seen. There's Autobots. Autobots assemble. Optimus Prime says that. So I was looking at Autobots, and that's where you know Auto Next. Uh, uh, auto is uh, you know your vehicle. Uh, next is basically NXT is the next generation of automobiles. So we are starting with tractors. By the way, tractor is our first product. We, there are so many other vehicles that need uh, these modifications. So that's the reason why we came up with Auto Next as a name. Okay, that's very interesting. I think you know kids would have loved it, and uh, you know very soon maybe you launch a new model and you can keep a name as Bumblebee as well. So <laughs> a lot of kids would uh, encourage that. Yes, and uh, you know before we move, just one last question uh, from Nandini Ishwaran uh, who have joined us in YouTube. Uh, so she asked whether you know the same tractor can be used uh, for all the fields, like you know even for coconut farms or any different types of farms. So what is your answer for that, sir? Yes, so. As I said, the tractor, uh, electric tractor is exactly like your diesel tractor. There is no change. There's a hydraulic, there's a PTO, all uh, uh, you know uh, features that a normal diesel tractor has, except for the guzzling engine. There is everything as it is. So uh, you can do everything that a normal diesel tractor uh, does. In fact, with much more uh, efficiency, much more power. So uh, there's one more video actually I would like to uh, you know, share with uh, the kids if to show them the power if it if the time permits. Yes, sir. Please, please. Yeah. So here you see uh, how powerful the electric tractor is. Uh, let me know when the screen is visible. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's visible. Sir. So it, it is two. There are two diesel tractors here, uh, which are pulling this particular weight. This is a forty-five. 50 HP, uh, you know, diesel tractors, popular brands, tip, uh, every, use everywhere. 
So you can see how much this is right now. They're creating so much, uh, I don't know if you're able to hear the sound, but uh, there's a lot of uh, noise and struggle that the tractors are uh, you know, going through. And then uh, finally, they're able to get the thing moving. Now the same person is sitting here. You can see his reaction. Our one single 45 HP tractor. He's looking behind. Uh, he's not able to, he's laughing. He's not able to believe that one single tractor is getting such a massive load in motion. Uh, the earlier uh, video that you saw, there were two tractors attached, one uh, behind the other, and they were trying to pull the same load. So that's the power of electric. And this is 45 HP, that was 50 HP, two tractors. You can see this is even more bigger load, uh, 19 tons almost. So you can see it's climbing a slight slope here. Normally, the diesel tractors will topple. The front will come up like this, and you know the driver is in danger then because he's right in the center. So those things won't happen in electric. Uh, to, to talk in technical terms, electric uh, powertrain or motors, uh, the torque versus RPM uh, uh, graph uh, curves are uh, uh, very flat. So basically, you don't need high RPM for higher torque. In diesel, you need to accelerate, push the pedal as much as possible to get the power that you need. What happens then is that your wheels start slipping. Your RPM is high, so your wheels start slipping. And it's not a... Uh, for proper concrete or tar road. It's a field, it's a loose soil. So your wheels tend to slip and then there is no torque. But in electric, with less uh, less RPM, there is high torque. So the uh, to get such a massive load or the implement moving, it's easier. You can see it's able to do cement haulage, you know, tier two, tier three cities. They have a lot of construction that is happening and tractors are being used because the lanes are very narrow. So you need a vehicle that can turn very sharply and you know get the job done uh, easily. So tractors are still being used and it will be used because uh, you know there is no other vehicle which can do uh, such a smooth job or you know have shorter turning radius. Yes. So yeah, I mean this is another you know video where you can see the power of the tractor, single chisel blow. It's cutting it like a piece of cake, very solid form. Uh, normally tractors get stuck. Yes. Right. Uh, I mean, that's a very interesting video as well. I can see that, you know, uh, where you are bringing in innovation, not only with respect to the technology, but its durability and the usage of, you know, the day-to-day -day life, right? I think there are a lot of use cases that you have, uh, you know, studied and you have implemented. That's uh, wonderful to see. And these are some truly inspiring insights. Now, um, I'm, I was wondering, you know, designing an EV tractor itself is a challenging task, right? And on top of it, uh, you know, you have implemented some advanced AI tools and uh, even made it as a driverless uh, EV tractor. So, I mean, uh, to be very frank, even I'm not able to contemplate how you did it. Uh, so I think, you know, you must be very smart. But uh, uh, can you tell us in simple terms uh, for kids here today, like how this driverless technology in your EV tractor works so that, you know, we can also get some insights on that. Sure, sure certainly. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I mean, the tractor is similar to a, uh, you know, autonomous or line following robot, right? So what do you do in line follow robots? You have a camera, uh, you have the uh, the sensors, IR sensors, which are detecting the black and uh, white surface. And then it basically adjusts itself and moves in a straight line. Similarly, in the tractor, because it's moving inside of farm plot. So by the way, autonomous free share works only inside a farm. It doesn't work on road. We, we don't want to uh, you know yet come on road with uh, uh, driverless functions because we, you, know, you know how people drive <laughs> out there. So, uh, just to solve the problem on the farm, uh, the driverless feature is introduced. And what we do is basically the farmer, when he buys an electric autonomous tractor, he has to himself drive the tractor on the boundary of the farm. Suppose it's a odd shape or rectangle or whatever shape it is. Earlier, we had a feature where, you know, we gave him a mobile app where he could plot the boundary, mark the boundary uh, using his fingertips. But then we realized that farmers from the top view, they cannot understand which is their own farm. So they, they could mark their uh, neighbor's farm and then the tractor will start moving there. So we came up with the idea that let's not do this. Let's, uh, you know, let them drive the tractor on the boundary. Let them show the boundary to the, the tractor. Once that is done, the tractor, uh, you leave the tractor at the starting point, wherever it is. And uh, the tractor will follow, make sure that the geofencing, uh, once the geofencing, the boundary marking is basically called geofencing. Uh, it the tractor will start working inside that plot 
using different sensors. The tractor has cameras, a dual lens cameras, which are able to understand the depth of the object, how far it is. And uh, there are other uh, sensors like GNSS. So your GPS or in your phone uh, works, has a two meter radius. It's not accurate enough. So you cannot actually, you know, get uh, the tractor uh, having a GPS work inside a farm because it will go uh, haywire. I know it, it will have errors up to two meters. So GNSS is the technology that we use. So this is basically using all different satellites. Uh, GPS is American satellites. So they are only using American satellites, but GNSS uses uh, Russian, GLONASS, uh, Chinese Baidu, uh, and, and GPS, all uh, different uh, satellites. And now even uh, our own ISRO uh, has you know, introduced a lot of these uh, uh, you know, satellites of our own. So once those come in, we'll be able to get more accuracy. We can actually pinpoint a, a coin kept on the uh, ground and the tractor will be able to, you know, uh, understand which location it is. So that's how uh, uh, the automation works. And in fact, when the tractor is reaches the end point, the tractor will inform the farmer that my job is done. You can come and collect me. So meanwhile, the farmer is free to do whatever, you know, other businesses that he's into, like poultry farming or milk production, or he wants to attend someone's wedding or, you know, uh, just relax at home. He can do that. Okay. Okay. Got it. So our, I think, you know, that is something uh, very interesting and uh, you also on the ground worked on it so that, you know, you were able to quickly change according to uh, the farmer's uh, need and, uh, you know, roll out a new update. I think that's wonderful to hear. And uh, there is a question. I mean, this is a frequent question from a lot of kids here. Uh, Mohit Banka, Krik Ridesh. They have all asked the same thing, like, uh, aren't electric tractors expensive? Uh, like, how, you know, farmers can afford it? Uh, that is their question. I'm really impressed that the kids are really smart here. And they already know that it, uh, electric tractors are uh, expensive electric vehicle. I think they must be owning electric vehicles by now. Yes, it is expensive. In fact, it is double. Uh, so your cost of diesel tractor is 7 lakh or 8 lakh. Our electric tractors will cost you about 15 lakh. But... Uh, once you suppose I'm a farmer who is owning uh, uh, a diesel tractor, so I buy an eight lakh rupees tractor, uh, and uh, 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 you know you are owning a electric uh, uh, tractor, which is costing you fifteen lakh. So I, I am using the tractor for one year, and I'm doing the job. I'm filling, uh, refueling the tank for diesel, and I'm spending almost about four to five lakh rupees just on the fuel to get the same job that you will get done in less than 40 to 50,000 rupees of electricity units because you're charging that is available. In fact, in cities, we pay 10 rupees or even higher per unit. In farms, it's cheaper. Considering that you're paying 10 rupees also, you will be doing the same job in 50,000 rupees. So you will be first year, uh, I'll be profitable because I'm owning, um, I've spent eight plus say four lakh, 12 lakhs. Whereas you have already spent 14 plus 50,000, uh, 15 plus 50,000, 15 lakh, 50,000. Okay. But second year, I'm again spending the same 4 lakh, whereas you are again spending for 50,000. So second year, you will uh, you will be, you know, going in profit. So the operational expense is so good that within two years, the person owning an electric tractor is going to make money. And in eight years, he is going to save up to 30 lakh Indian rupees, 30 lakh. That's a massive uh, saving considering the farmer uh, income. And uh, they can actually, you know, 30 lakh is equivalent to almost two, two new tractors. So considering your diesel tractor is four new tractors. So that's how the economics work. And which is why we say that we are not selling tractors to each and every farmer. We don't want to force uh, every farmer uh, just, uh, you know, like most of the companies do by you know creating a press issue that you know you're a uh, sarpanch of the village so you should own a tractor not like that if you are into a business of tractor renting if you're a contractor uh, then you own a tractor because we need to make sure that you're using the tractor as many hours as possible so that's how the you know finance and economics works uh, in, in terms of tractors. 
got it got it i think you know uh, that would justify you know why we should all move to uh, ev vehicles and uh, uh, at the end of the day you know we are going to be benefited in the longer term right and uh, there's also a question from uh, russian uh, who has joined us in youtube so he asked you know can we use a solar panel you know in the tractor to charge it uh, instead of an electricity certainly uh, but uh, the solar charging is not fast enough compared to the consumption that you're doing uh, the, when you're using the tractor. But yes, if you have a, you know, a cattle uh, and you have shed for them or your own roof of your home uh, is big enough, you can attach solar panels. You can have a separate battery to store that power. You can use that power to charge your tractors. So yes, definitely uh, solar, wind, now biomass, bio uh, gas, all these you know, different renewable energies uh, uh, work that is happening in India those can definitely be used, uh, you know, for charging the vehicles, the tractors. Right. I think, you know, uh, that's uh, more of, more more kids were asking about it. And uh, this is one more question uh, that's popping up uh, more often. They're asking about the mileage after uh, one charge. So oh. how much kilometers does it travel, this tractor, CV tractors? Oh. Um, now I'm guessing how old are these kids exactly? <laughs> are they 18 plus or what? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, once you charge the tractor, uh, so you you can actually get almost six to eight hours of work done. So as I said, I mean, a driver cannot drive for more than four hours. So it's su sufficient enough for any uh, human being uh, to, you know, get the job done with that much charge. And that's, uh, uh, in, in terms of tractors, we don't uh, consider kilometers because it's very slow inside the farm. So we call it in uh, terminal hours, how many hours you, your vehicle works. So it's six to eight hours, considering heavy work, like, you know, rotary cultivator, which requires big machines that you saw in the videos, it will be four to five hours. But it's, again, sufficient because uh, the power that uh, the human who is driving the tractor needs is more than enough. Okay, great, great. I think, you know, kids are very much pumped with uh, a lot of questions. So before you know, we take up some questions, I you know there's one uh, question I want to ask you. Uh, I mean, uh, so EV tractors and uh, driverless uh, tractors, uh, I mean, these come with a lot of uh, technology and a lot of parts which are complicated, right? So how do you handle the, you know, designing, manufacturing, and uh, if you can show some uh, light on that, it would be helpful. And also, you know, maybe any disadvantage or any kind of challenge that you face uh, while manufacturing them. If you can uh, show us, sir, that would be helpful. Absolutely. Yes. So, yes, certainly. I mean, uh, tractor is big. First of all, it it uh, has a lot of complicated, uh, you know, parts. Uh, it's not like your uh, two wheeler or your three wheeler that you fit the motor and uh, you know it just gets started uh, so you have to calculate how much power you need first of all how much uh, you know load the tractor is going to go uh, through 45 hp for example we started with uh, smaller tractors earlier but then now we are building 45 hp tractor so we had to see the engine performance we had to put it in the uh, you know dynamometer test the curves of how, how the torque is and uh, uh, you know build a similar motor which is basically equivalent in terms of power delivery. And that's how uh, you, you know we, we basically came up with this. Initially, yes, of course, we faced a lot of challenges. There was no motor available or no battery uh, that was this big and, you know, it, which could go through so many hardships or, you know, extreme climates because your car can be parked in a parking lot, but your tractors are always out there inside the sun, under the sun. And uh, as you know, electric uh, vehicles uh, cannot... Uh, have higher temperature so you have to have a uh, proper cooling or you know right chemistry that is used inside the batteries so i literally sent one of my childhood friends to uh, you know uh, china he went to china and he visited uh, different factories he saw what is happening over there is uh, you know and because at that time china was way ahead of us uh, they were doing a lot of electric vehicles so we understood that there are different chemistries there are different chemistries that work in higher temperatures we selected that chemistry back in the uh, uh, you know, 2017, uh, and now that same chemistry is also being used in Tesla cars uh, after two years. So we basically uh, built the battery from scratch. Uh, we have partners uh, here who you know help us build the uh, battery. We also have uh, motor partners, motor manufacturers, experts who are uh, you know building uh, motors for different use cases. 
So we use or leverage them uh, for building that. And as you can see, we have already set up a small assembly unit. Uh, this is in UP near Delhi, about 50 kilometers from Delhi, where we, this is a, these are some old photos where, you know, uh, we were building that facility where you have uh, a complete assembly unit. So where your tractor comes, your uh, transmission mechanical components come, we fit the battery, we fit the motor, it goes inside a paint booth, and then it is, it's coming out and it's tested on a roller test bed. So you, you park the tractor on that roller uh, test and run the tractor continuously. It, you can see how much temperature, temperature uh, the motor is going up to. Then we went with liquid cooling for motor. We did uh, some changes. So it has taken us time for all of these developments. And then finally, now we have, we are confident that, you know, our product is working fine. The people are loving it. People are, uh, uh, you know, definitely appreciating the performance better than the uh, diesel counterparts. So that has been, you know, a long journey uh, for the electric tractor alone. And automation is ongoing already. Automation, we are still testing. We are, uh, you know, uh, seeing where the automation features can be used. So we are uh, working with farmers who are into grey pine yards. So in grey pine yards, they use tractors only for spraying pesticide. So pesticides are very harmful for human skin. You know, if you're exposed to pesticides for a longer period, it can cause uh, serious issues. So we uh, are targeting these niche areas where the automation really is required. Uh, so uh, in that grey pine yard, there's a lane. So uh, the different cameras, different sensors are detecting the lane and just like the uh, line follow robots, it's working. So all of these things we are, you know, parallelly doing. There's a big team now. Uh, um, I've, uh, it was my idea, but then uh, we have a lot of engineers from different backgrounds who are working together with us. It's always a teamwork when you're building even a robot. You always have a, you know, person who is good at coding. You have a person who is good at assembly and sensors. So it's just like that. Even in a startup like ours or a company like ours, there is always a big team which is working together. Uh, and you know, coming to uh, up with the idea. Got it. Got it. I think uh, that's uh, it's very interesting to see. You know, the entire manufacturing is being done uh, in house, and how you have the end to end knowledge on the doctors' uh, manufacturing. And uh, when we're talking about the manufacturing, uh, I mean, there's one question again popping up from kids and even I didn't come up with these kind of questions. So, uh, so Aro and Lutch here, they were asking, uh, so which states have started implementing uh, EV tractors and uh, is there a government subsidy uh, for uh, such, uh, you know, implementation? That is their question. <laughs> I'm really impressed by the questions, first of all. I mean, this is like, <laughs> it doesn't feel like I'm giving a kid's session right now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, subsidies, yes, of, yes, there are subsidies already on diesel tractors. But uh, in fact, for electric tractors, now the government is announcing a similar subsidy that is available for the three-wheelers or two-wheelers. Two so where one kilowatt, uh, there's 10,000 rupees. So suppose our tractor is about 15 lakh. Uh, our, our tractor has 38 kilowatt battery pack, uh, 38 into, you know, 10,000. It's about 380,000 rupees subsidized but, uh, tractor you will get. So it will come around in the same range of your, you know, 60 HP or 50 HP tractors. So yes, there is there are subsidies and we are working with the government to get more help uh, so that farmers and, you know, individuals also can start owning, tractor contractors can start owning. And we can create smarter jobs in rural India uh, with a lot of young engineers coming out of rural India and they're not able to leave their parents who are, uh, you know, working on fields and go to uh, new cities and work. They can start the business of owning tractors. They can start uh, the business of renting tractors to different farmers that we are working on right now. Okay, great. And uh, there's one more question. Um, so basically, they were asking about uh, what about the uh, weather conditions, like in case of monsoon or uh, any other uh, natural calamities. So can the EV tractors withstand the same way other tractors do or how it is? That's their question. Yes. So we have tested the components uh, as per IP67. So there are ratings, you know, uh, when you're manufacturing your phone or, you know, different electronics, there are different test certificates that you get from testing agencies like ARI, ICAT, uh, based out of Manesar, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, ARI is in Pune. So all these test facilities, 
you give your components over there you test the components for different uh, shower test uh, different uh, in fact there are tests where the battery is kept on a fire so you literally they put a fire uh, uh, below your battery and then they see how that battery is reacting you must have seen a lot of videos where your scooters uh, getting catching fire and they burst like your diwali crackles uh, but then our uh, battery you know it's a different chemistry it's a, a lithium ion phosphate chemistry which does not catch fire it does not burst uh, when uh, the test there's the nail test in in uh, you know uh, icat or arf where the cell is basically uh, they put a nail inside the cell and see how what happens in your normal lithium ion batteries your phone batteries it will start bursting and it is very dangerous but in lithium ion phosphate which is the chemistry called phosphate uh, there is just powder that will come out and there is no uh, as such fire uh, or you know hazard so you just have to of course replace the battery but then uh, there is no danger as such uh, using these kind of batteries so that is you know the detailing that we have to do uh, to make sure that it goes through such hazardous conditions right i think you know uh, that answers because a lot of kids were asking what about the scorching sun what about the monsoon i think uh, uh, that answers all of them that you know this vehicle is highly durable and it is tested on the ground and it is proven uh, according to the use case of farmers and uh, i think that is actually a wonderful news to hear about evs because uh, i mean when we talk about evs uh, the first thing comes to uh, i mean some of our minds is that how safe it is how durable it is what about our actual use cases right? whether it is something that you know we can use it just for our normal commute or can we use it in a rough rugged way like how we use a normal vehicle i think that you have taken up into consideration and uh, built this so that is uh, really amazing and uh, i mean I, I, it seems very challenging to get these ev tractors to action so uh, being a next generation entrepreneur so how do you think the future is going to be mr kaustav like with uh, ai booming uh, what does uh, you know starting up in india look like and any thoughts uh, for our future entrepreneurs here? I'm sure a lot of uh, kids who are asking these questions are thinking about uh, ideas and coming up with questions to farm solutions. So how do you see the future India? and How do you see starting up in India is going to be? Yes, certainly. So uh, yes, after after looking at the questions that I had, I'm very uh, you know, assured that definitely the next generation is going to be really uh, uh, you know, uh, bright, and they are going to uh, start up uh, more innovative startups. And uh, there's no a doubt that there will be a lot of Teslas, Googles, and you know, Microsoft of the world coming from India. And uh, I believe in the current situation and uh, the kind of platform that the kids here are going to have with AI coming in, uh, it is going to be much easier uh, to experiment to uh, actually get uh, different ideas that we only have seen in sci-fi movies to reality and uh, that is something that uh, you know uh, uh, is is something uh, I'm, I'm sure about and uh, uh, you know i would like to also share that a lot of uh, kids you know these days say uh, think about doing masters they go to us they go to different countries uh, but i think uh, we in india have so many problems uh, we have uh, people who are struggling on fields, be it different industries. So uh, definitely, I think these kids who are asking these questions, they uh, once they have uh, you know seen these challenges, they will get inspired to build more products, uh, you know, more innovative products that can solve these problems. So we, when when our uh, you know uh, mother has a, a headache, you don't go outside uh, and you know uh, to fix someone else's problem. You actually help her. You give her water. You you know. Uh, you ask her what she want, needs. So it's the same. India uh, is our mother and, you know, you need to fix all uh, the local problems or the uh, home problems first before, you know, going out and uh, uh, going to the Mars. Uh, you know, we can fix the earth first uh, before uh, flying off to the Mars. That's what I believe. And that is what uh, the kids these days uh, are uh, looking forward to. And with these platforms like uh, Plato, definitely there's... Uh, you know, a lot of opportunity to learn at such a uh, young age. I saw a 10 year old asking questions uh, and uh, which are really something that I, I was just watching cartoons at 10 year old. I was not knowing about subsidies and all that <laughs> at 10 year old. So uh, this is something that is really impressive. And uh, 
I'm sure that the future of India is in safe hands looking at, you know, the inter interaction here. Great. Uh, that's uh, really uh, inspiring of you, sir. And a uh, few questions. I mean, this one uh, question is coming up from Angad and uh, other kids in YouTube. Uh, so they're asking what kind of advanced features that, you know, this uh, Autonext EV tractor has, like, does it have an anti-theft uh, system or uh, something to cut off electricity if the battery is being uh, you know overcharged something like that any uh, advanced uh, features that you can state sir which you the ev tractors have yes in fact uh, in in rural area there's a lot of pilferage of diesel uh, so diesel tractors if you park it outside people used to come and steal your diesel now they cannot do anything they, it's an electric tractor there's nothing to steal in it uh, the battery is massive. If they're uh, trying to steal that massive battery, I mean, uh, be it then. I mean, it's a 300 kilo uh, battery. So uh, we have certainly, uh, uh, you know, features like GPS. Uh, your mobile app has uh, the exact location of the tractor, uh, how much trip uh, you have done, how much uh, work you have done, all those, you know, things you get in your phone. Uh, and basically... What happens is that if you're, somebody is trying to start the tractor, you will get an alert in your phone, which typically is in is there in uh, the, uh, modern cars also. So that those features we can easily do because it's electric. You can do whatever uh, you know you want. We can put a lot of sensors. You can even put sensors on every uh, uh, you know oil or the coolant that is there. So those features are already uh, you know something that are available in different models. Great. Uh, I think uh, that is uh, truly commendable uh, because uh, I really liked uh, the way you know uh, you explained because that shows your expertise and passion and especially you know uh, leveraging technology to enhance uh, farming practices uh, because farming is one of the uh, holy occupation and uh, farming is the backbone of our nation and building something for farmers and uh, uh, helping them achieve the tasks which they face in their life I think that is really commendable uh, it's very wonderful uh, for us to uh, have you Mr. Kausap here and before you know we go to the uh, you know conclusion of uh, the question and answers uh, one to ask you, you know, if you can share some, uh, you know, advice to kids who have gathered here, uh, how you know, they should see their uh, paths if interested in technology. So if you can tell them, you know, what they should do to become the future innovators, that should really inspire a lot of kids here. Please, Mr. Kostov. Sure, certainly. So, uh, you know, when we were kids, uh, computers basically were introduced and, uh, you know, people thought that now, a lot of people will lose their jobs and, you know, uh, this is bad for the country. Uh, but then we ended up creating uh, the biggest IT hub. I mean, in India is now literally the backbone of the AI industry because there are so many coders, so many uh, IT uh, folks here in India. Now, literally, uh, world uh, AI was running because of so many Indians, you know, working uh, across the uh, globe. So uh, I think... Uh, you know, a lot of these uh, kids who are here, uh, they're already on the right path, of course, by, you know, uh, uh, showing interest and learning, uh, attending uh, a session like uh, from me, a random person who is coming and talking about electric tractors on a Sunday morning instead of going out to play. So that is itself is very impressive. And uh, what I uh, I really feel is that uh, kids with, with robotic talents, I mean, you, if someone, if you have an idea, uh, a lot of people will tell you that, you know, don't do it. Why are you doing? There's no need for it. Uh, but you are the one who saw that dream. So you are the one who knows which colors you can paint it with. That's what I believe in. So you should focus on your dream. You should uh, make sure that, you know, uh, uh, talk with your end clients who is going to use the product, understand their challenges and start whatever age you are. There's no limit. Uh, there's uh, nobody can tell you that, you know, you're 10 year or 15 year old. Of course, you should finish your education first, but then, uh, you know, uh, there's no age limit to starting up. If you have, have an idea, talk with your parents, tell them and uh, go and speak with the, uh, you know, people who uh, are going to use your product. If it's a robot, which is going to work in a factory, go to a factory, talk with them, tell them that, you know, what are you doing currently? I can make a robot for this. Why are you exposing yourself to extreme heat? You know, I saw a lot of foundries there. They have uh, extreme heavy, you know, molten metal and uh, a, a human being is very near to that why it's needed you can do it with a robot 
and don't worry uh, people will say that you know this automation will lose a lot of jobs and all that it's nothing like that it will only create smarter jobs and people will be safer and people will strive to learn more and uh, you know uh, uh, improve improve their skills and uh, you know as i said i mean work for a smarter uh, uh, job instead of doing something that is very harmful for them and of course with smarter jobs comes better income uh, the overall economy will be definitely better and uh, that is what uh, i would you know recommend to the kids here uh, don't limit yourself if you have an idea just go for it and uh, you know i think uh, india has so many options so many uh, people here to test with so you're in the right place uh, the uh, government and everybody is so supportive pm modi you know he's made this make in india uh, uh, you know uh, whole uh, move and uh, uh, 2014 when i was in second year i visited the first uh, ex exhibition here in mumbai and i saw what is happening and now when uh, just last month when we were in startup mahakum uh, where you know there were so many startups the difference is massive there are startups in every sector gaming uh, you know a farming uh, automobile whatever you think uh, you, you know there are different uh, kinds of solutions out there so i think this is very interesting and uh, i was very happy uh, to give this session uh, uh, you know to so many smart kids uh, and i'm sure this is going to be uh, the next the future of india is in in definitely safe hands good uh, that's really wonderful of you sir you know uh, because uh, we even we at plato labs want to uh, encourage kids uh, to come up with more ideas uh, showcase their talents and uh, show them you know what they are capable of to the world because we, it's us who is going to make the difference rather than waiting for someone to come in and make a difference so on that note uh, so kids i told there's a surprise uh, in the end and before i reveal the surprise uh, there is one more interesting uh, you know point i want to show here so uh, mr kausab you mentioned you being in college participating in competitions and uh, you know showcasing your uh, ideas now a uh, lot of kids of plato labs also have participated in competitions and uh, one uh, competition uh, which happened at iit delhi last week it's a robocap league and uh, some of our students participated there and they really showcased their skills so I wanted to take some time to uh, you know uh, show you uh, what they have done and uh, you know take some uh, congratulations from you as well i hope that is fine with you sure sure i would it's the best thing that i can do on sunday <laughs> right so i mean uh, so i have a presentation let me share it so here uh, so we had uh, two categories in the competition robo cap league and uh, uh, so these are uh, some of our kids who participated in the junior category so shiv madan uh, here has won the first prize uh, in the junior category and uh, angad here who, who won a second prize uh, in the junior category and there were also special awards given to kids and uh, vihan uh, won a best creative design award and advik won the sustainability award and ikagra here uh, won a best uh, technical innovation award uh, so kids if you are here uh, in this session uh, so do take a, a pic of this and uh, post it in your uh, social media account and tag plato labs definitely we will also show our uh, encouragement to you and uh, i'll show you few videos sir of uh, uh, kids what they have done uh, so that uh, you can have an understanding of what they did so here this is the uh, you know robot that's built by angad so it's a minimal surface uh, safe uh, space robot so the theme of uh, this robocap league competition was on space exploration so they actually built uh, projects to uh, support that idea so this is his project let's see what it is
yeah uh, right so uh, basically uh, he has done a small uh, space robot uh, with a minimal uh, space and he has integrated Arduino and multiple sensors to it uh, so that it will occupy lesser space and even he thought about uh, the space constraint in rocket so he made it a very minimal uh, robot so that it can be uh, taken into uh, space uh, without any uh, further constraints so this was the project prototype that was done by Angad and Rashiv built uh, a Bluetooth controlled robot, uh, which he named as uh, Pragyan Chandrayaan 3. So this robot is more of a rover, which can be controlled from a remote location and can be utilized for a, a space exploration. So, and uh, then coming to the uh, junior uh, senior category, uh, so Sanip won the first prize uh, and Karthikeyan won the second prize here. And uh, there were special awards given, and uh, Arjo won the Best Creative Design Award, and uh, Sache won the Sustainability Award, and uh, Vivon won the Best Technical Innovation Award. And uh, they all have done wonderful projects in the topic of space exploration as well. And uh, here is a, a small video of uh, what they have done, and uh, would like to you know show it to you. So this is a. a Land Rover robot, uh, which has a robotic arm uh, on top of it, so it can be controlled uh, via Bluetooth, and uh, you can actually control the robot from a remote location. And uh, this robot, this robotic arm, can be used to you know pick and place objects. That's what he has done. And uh, Kartikeyan here uh, has built a space exploration robot. So this robot uh, can be controlled using a mobile app. And uh, this is how it works. So he can uh, control all the wheels from the uh, app and he can make the rover move. And uh, it is uh, it is made in such a way that it can uh, handle rough terrain as well. And uh, it can uh, go on rugged terrain and uh, uh, we can explore different terrains safely from a remote location. So that was his idea. Uh, I think this is very similar to what uh, you did in your uh, college days, I guess, with yeah. sensors and uh, robots. I think so... we have a very tough competition here. <laughs> I'm from Karthik. <laughs> we like to right. work definitely. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, so he made it in such a way that, you know, he can control it uh, with a mobile phone and the robot will be able to uh, move and uh, go on different terrains. So uh, since you mentioned about, you know, your college days and how, you know, building projects uh, during your college days helped you, I think uh, these are some of the uh, achievements from our kids in the recent days. And I'm, I hope uh, your uh, speech today should have inspired a lot of kids to come up uh, with more uh, challenges and ideas in the coming days. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Kaustav, for this session. So our mission is, uh, at Red Labs is also to inspire and empower the kids to become the next generation innovators. And your expertise today uh, certainly helped them to understand what impact our work can have on the environment and how it can uh, take the country forward. Uh, so kids, you know, as I mentioned, there was a surprise to all of you. So I will now reveal the, reveal the surprise. So we are going to have an awesome challenge for you. So uh, you have to create a short video uh, for uh, one to two minutes and explaining what you learned in this webinar. And you have to post it on any social media like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And you have to tag Plato Labs at the rate Plato Labs. So I'll repeat. So we are going to have a challenge for you. So you have to create a short video uh, explaining what you learned uh, in this webinar today. And you have to post it in your social media, tagging Plato Labs. And we will select two winners out of this. And we will be announcing these two winners in the next Plato Talk. Yes, we are going to have a Plato Talk in the coming Sunday as well. And in the coming Sunday, we are going to have the topic on chewing gum. So when I say chewing gum, I'm sure a lot of kids here uh, would love to do uh, allow chewing gums. But here we are going to talk about, you know, we are going to know about processed food and chewing gums. And uh, this topic is going to be uh, handled by the founder of Good Gum, uh, who actually have, uh, you know, featured in Shark Tank. And uh, he also got uh, funding over there. If you have seen Shark Tank, you must be knowing it. So the founder of Good Gum is going to be here coming Sunday. 
and he is going to explain you about processed foods and chewing gum. And in that session, I'll be revealing the two winners uh, who is going to be uh, selected after this today's session. And the winners will be getting an award. And also, you will be receiving a good gum chewing gum mini cup, mini pack, which is plastic free and sugar free. And uh, you will be getting a certificate as well. Right. So please create a video explaining what you learned in this talk. And you have the chance to win these awards and amazing gift from you. Right. So right now, uh, the, on this note, uh, so we are towards the end. So we will take a couple of uh, questions, uh, Mr. Kostap. So then we can end the session because a lot of kids are throwing questions. I mean, we have questions more than the number of uh, participants here. So uh, one of the questions they have is, uh, uh, let me just uh, ask you that. Uh, so, uh, Ankur Paliwal uh, and some of the kids uh, who have joined in YouTube and Fair or Zoom is asking about the lifespan of the battery. Uh, what is the lifespan of the battery and what is the you know life cycle of it? Because that's a challenge in EV, right? That's why they're asking it. Yes. So, uh, the cycles, I mean, charge to discharge cycle uh, in our uh, bat uh, battery is about 2,500. That's about uh, with an average or you know heavy use of tractor also. Is it will be uh, eight years life. Uh, that's typically the life of a tractor also because uh, it has a lot of wear and tear. But during that eight years, there's no maintenance as such. So even if you, after eight years, the battery is not completely useless. The battery can be used for other ESS applications like your inverters or you know your solar uh, 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 battery packs. So it can be recycled. So you have to replace the battery. You don't have to buy a new one directly. So the cost of the new battery will be much lesser. And then again, you can get another, you know, eight years. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions. Great. I think, you know, we'll have a rapid fire round because I, I know that you are running out of time, but we'll just uh, quickly take some questions. Uh, so Mohana here, I've asked, uh, you know, how much time does it typically take to manufacture a fully functional electric tractor? I know it's a very challenging question, but uh, if you can throw some light on that. <laughs> First time when we did it, it took us two months, <laughs> but now okay. we uh, now we do it in about uh, four hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's very amazing! So, so typically six tractors comes out uh, in a day, children. So, uh, that is super fast, and I'm sure you know we'll see a lot of changes in the coming uh, years as well. And uh, there is also one question: uh, Suppose if these tractors, uh, you know, break down, right? Uh, when in a remote location. Can they be serviced like a normal tractors or is there any challenge in that? Uh, yes, it can be serviced. So all the electrical, electronic components can be, you know, uh, fixed remotely uh, as well. Uh, the mechanical components are exactly as a normal tractor. Uh, mm. so, since it's a huge battery, so what we did was we re realized that, okay, nobody can pick up, uh, uh, you know, get a crane on the farm and pick up the huge 300 kilo battery. So we divided the battery in 30 kilo modules. So it's a swappable battery. So two people can easily uh, pull out one module at a time and 10 modules can be kept aside. You can service the tractor, put it back in, you know, it works. So yeah, every problem you have to, you know, come up with solutions. So that's how we move to the swappable batteries, which are easier to service. Right. All right. That's, uh, you know, a uh, wonderful thing to hear, Mr. Kostab. And one question, you know, kids are asking is uh, in EV space, so who are the upcoming companies? Like, how, what do you see in this space? Right, right. So, I mean, in uh, two-wheeler space, there is, uh, you know, a lot of companies like Ola, Aether, etc., uh, which are coming up. Uh, Three-wheelers, there's already Altai Green in India, uh, which is working, OSM, EV. Uh, uh, in four-wheeler, you know, you have already uh, seen Tata, Nixon, and etc. Uh, companies. In tractors, yes, there are a few companies which are working on the idea of smaller tractors, nobody in the first big tractors. We were the first ones back in 2017 to actually build an electric tractor in India and uh, you know show it uh, to farmers in an exhibition. Uh, later, there, there have been two, two or three companies which have started uh, you know, R&D and testing uh, in, in the country. I don't want to name the com companies right now because I'm, it will be like marketing like competitors. So. <laughs> Right. So uh, I can uh, see that, you know, a lot of innovation is happening in this space. And as you mentioned, uh, there are startups coming up in every technology and every field uh, that, you know, we see today. And especially uh, I want to uh, give 
hats off to all founders out there uh, like you sir who are actually having a mission and passion towards solving something uh, that is very important in our life and helping the farmers so uh, really happy uh, to have you today and uh, I'm, from my heart i want to give my thanks on behalf of the kids who have uh, gathered here our parents and teachers uh, so thank you for taking your time and coming uh, here and explaining about ev tractors in a way that kids can understand and uh, it really uh, was inspirational for all of us here and uh, we would like to you know uh, see more achievements from you in the coming years as well wish you all the very best sir yes thank you thank you for inviting me here in fact i am more happy i don't know uh, if it was useful or not but then looking at all the reactions and the questions that we i had i'm uh, i had uh, a very good time here uh, with all the kids and uh, i wish you all the best and uh, one more thing i mean there was a competition here a few of them won the competition few of them did not but then those who did not don't not give up uh, next time you have a better opportunity we as a startup we have also failed multiple times we have also not won many competitions but then if you don't give up there will be a day where you will stand and uh, you know get the award uh, in front of everyone so do not give up on your ideas keep keep up and uh, you know keep building the rewards that you're building thank you thank you everyone thank you so much sir thank you for the kind words so kids uh, so excited for the next week session so we are going to have a session on uh, uh, chewing gums and uh, when i say chewing gums a lot of technologies go into chewing gums as well so the founder of good gum is going to be here and uh, he is going to help us understand more about chewing gums and uh, regarding the awesome challenge uh, so we want you to make a few short video on what you learned on today's webinar and post it in your social media account and please tag plato lab so that you know our moderators can go through it and select two winners to give special awards and gifts uh, in the coming session and also stay tuned for our uh, plato talk uh, which is going to come in the next weekend and you will be getting the notification very soon and kids who have joined youtube and uh, parents and teachers uh, please do subscribe to our channel to get timely notification on our plato talk and you can enjoy it and also parents and uh, teachers uh, please share this uh, video to your uh, friends and family so that their kids can also understand the importance of uh, technology in today's world and inspire uh, to become the future innovators as well and on that particular note uh, so it's bye bye from my side uh, please take care and have a great weekend kids have fun and uh, we'll see you in the next play to talk again bye bye everyone take care